This is the homework for 512, 513, 514, 515, and 516 A and B. For problem 512, we need to first determine should the graph of this situation be linear or curved. Well, we know that it's increasing exponentially each time. It's not at a constant rate. Um, initially, she had a thousand cells, then um, the next day, 2,000, then it doubled again to uh, 4,000, then it doubled again, and then doubled again. And so this is not um, a linear equation because it's not at a constant rate. It's not 1,000, 1,000, 1,000 for each day. So we know it's going to be curved. It's not a linear equation. Second, we need to create a table and a graph for this um, situation. So here's the table, the number of cells, and I increase, increased it all the way to um, four days. And I did that because I know that it's, it's doubling for each day. So one, uh, one more day, um, 2,000 times two is four. Another day, two, th um, two multiplied by 4,000 is 8,000. Two multiplied by 8,000 is 16,000. And here are the points. And I know that this is my dependent variable and this is my independent because the number of cells depends on how many days it's the bacteria has been growing. Time will always be your X um, variable. It'll always be, time will always be the um, independent. Um, it'll always be on the X axis um, because time does not depend on anything. Um, everything else depends on time. So the number of cells, how many have grown, depends on how many days they've been growing. The last part, part C, we need to give a complete description of the graph of this situation. And the graph is curved because it's growing exponentially. There is no um, x-intercept. It's not. It's never going to cross the x-intercept because it's... Um, it's not decaying, it's, the bacteria is not dying, it's growing. Um, the function is increasing from the left to the right, and negative x and y values are not possible. So we have a one quadrant, quadrant one, because you can't have negative time and you can't have negative number of cells. You either have zero cells or they're increasing, and you start at zero, the, um, day zero when you start, and it's only increasing. 513, we need to write each expression in simplest form. So here, um, when you have the same base, integer exponents with the same base, and you're dividing them, you subtract the exponents. And I know that I have more um, exponents in the numerator than the denominator, so I know it's going to um, be in the numerator. And we have 723 minus 721, which gives us 5 to the second power, which equals 25. Part B, more um, we have the same base, 3 and 3. Um, more exponents in the numerator than the denominator. Uh, so we keep the base. 300 minus, and I use this division bar to remind me that I'm subtracting, 300 minus uh, 249, which gives me 3 to the 51st power. And I'm not going to go ahead and simplify this. Um, typically, if the exponent is 4 or less, you would simplify it, but since it's greater than 4, you leave it in this form. For C, you have this expression inside the parentheses raised to the zero power. Well, if you realize that this is to the zero power, um, all of this is raised to the zero power, so it equals one. Anything to the zero power equals one. So for D, we have this expression raised to the second power. So we have to distribute this two to each term inside the parentheses. 
So for four, I put a placeholder of one for the exponent because four to the first power is four. So now when you, you raise a power to a power, you're multiplying them. So one multiplied by two is two. Three multiplied by two is six. And two multiplied by negative two is negative four. And you can't have a negative exponent. It's, um, we're going to take the reciprocal of this, which brings this up into the numerator. Another way is we can just simplify it by um, applying the rule of dividing integer exponents with the same base, 10 and 10. We have 6 minus a negative 4, so 6 minus a negative 4, which is a positive 4, because the opposite of a negative 4 is positive 4. So 6 plus 4 is 10, and we have 4 squared, which is 16. And remember scientific notation, the, um, the A term it has to be greater than or equal to 1, but less than 10. Well, this is greater than 10, so we're going to decrease this by dividing it by 10, one place value to the left, which gives us 1 and 6 tenths. So if we decrease this by 1, by dividing it by 10, we have to multiply this by 10, so we're adding another 10. So 10 plus 1 is 11 which gives us 1 and 6 tenths multiplied by 10 to the 11th power. For 514, we need to determine if Jackie made a mistake when she got x equals 5. And I see the mistake that Jackie did make when um, Jackie squared the binomials of x plus 4 and x minus 1 she incorrectly distributed this thinking that um, you would do um, x to the first multiplied by 2, which would give us x squared, and then this would be 4 to the first, um, and 1 multiplied by 2 is 16. Well, that's not what you do when you have binomials. You're not distributing it like this. Um, x to the fourth squared would be written this way because this squaring is telling you you have two groups of x plus 4 that you're going to be multiplying. Here's my first group, here's my second group. And in order to do this, I'm going to distribute, multiply this term by these two terms, and then the 4 by these two terms. So I have x multiplied by x, which equals x squared. And then I'm going to distribute to the second term, x multiplied by 4 is 4x. Now I go to the second term here, I have 4 multiplied by x is 4x, and 4 multiplied by 4 is 16. Now I simplify this, I can combine like terms, 4x and 4x, which equals 8x. So when I simplify x plus 4 squared, or the quantity of x plus 4 squared, I'm not going to get x squared plus 16. I get x squared plus 8x plus 16. And I'll also do the same when I um, go ahead and simplify the quantity of x minus 1 squared. And so I have two groups of x minus 1 so x minus 1, x minus 1, and I'm going to do the same process as I did up, um, in the previous part. I'm going to distribute, multiply this x to both of these terms. So x multiplied by x is x squared. x multiplied by negative 1 is negative x. Neg now I'm going to go to the second term. Negative 1 multiplied by x is negative x. And negative x, I mean negative 1 multiplied by negative 1 is a positive one. Um, I combine like terms, negative x plus negative x is negative 2x. So now I have this simplified as x squared minus 2x plus 1, and then I have this simplified as x squared 
plus 8x plus 16, and then I bring the other two terms down, negative 2x and negative 5. And now I'm going to go ahead and solve for x. And I can um, go ahead and combine like terms. Here I have two like terms, and here I have two like terms. 8x minus 2x is 6x. 16 minus 5 is 11. On the right side of the equation, there are no like terms. Now I'm going to go ahead and um, go ahead and simplify it, and I'm going to solve I solve for x. And here I'm going to subtract x squared from both sides, and that creates a zero pair on both sides. Still don't have x by itself. I want to get the x's to the side that has a greater value, which is this side. So I'm going to add 2x to both sides. It creates a zero pair. 6x plus 2x is 8x. Inverse property of addition is subtraction. I'm going to subtract 11 from both sides. Zero pair. 11, um, 1 minus 11 is negative 10. And now inverse property of multiplication. 8x is multiplication is division. So now I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 8. This creates the giant 1. 1 multiplied by x equals x. And then negative 10 divided by 8 is negative 10 eighths. Or if I simplify this, I get x equals negative 1 and 25 hundredths. Problem 15 I need to write the equation of a line with a slope of negative 2 and a y-intercept at 0, 7. So remember, the, um, a line has an equation of y equals mx plus b. This is slope-intercept form. So m, the slope, is negative 2. And the b, the y-intercept, is um, when x is 0, so on the y-axis, we're at positive 7. So we get positive 7. So y equals negative 2x plus 7. For b, it's a little more complicated. There's a couple more steps that we have to do because we're given the slope, the m, but we're not given the y-intercept. We're given the x-intercept. So one way you could do it is go ahead and graph um, graph this point, um, start at the x-intercept, and use the slope of negative 3 over 2, and go, keep going up until you get to the y-intercept. The, y the other way you do it is, um, so I have the, um, the slope, which is negative 3 halves, and I have an, the x value, x is 4, and I have the y value, which is 0. And now I'm going to solve for b. The reason why I like this way better is because if the y-intercept um, doesn't fall between the, or on a lattice point um, and it's a, a fraction, then you won't be able to do it. And this is the only way that you would be able to do it. So now I simplify this. Um, three, negative 3 halves multiply by 4. I can um, cross-cancel here. 2 divided by 2 is 1. Um, 4 divided by 2 is 2. And so I'm left with 2. Negative 3 multiplied by 2 is negative 6. Inverse property of subtraction is addition. So I'm adding 6 to both sides. And I get the 0 pair here. And I end up with b equals 6. So the y-intercept is 6. So for the equation in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, we were given the slope, negative 3 halves, and the y-intercept is 6. For problem 516, we need to plot quadrilateral a, B, C, D. A is at negative 1, 2. B is at 0, 5. C is at 2 on the X, 5 on the Y. And D 
is at 6 on the x, 2 on the y. And now we need, the, need to rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise, so the opposite way a clock rotates. And what I can do is here's my pre-image. And I need to rotate one quarter turn, a 90 degree turn. And if I rotate this 90 degrees counterclockwise, that's one quarter turn. So if you look, here's my Y axis, it's pointing at 12 o'clock. A quarter turn, it needs to be pointing at nine o'clock counterclockwise. And what I can do is now, this is what my image is going to be, my A, B, C, D prime image. And I can go ahead and write down all of these coordinates. Um, I can write them all down right now on, on a piece of paper or do one at a time. So A prime will be at negative two comma negative one. And then I could rotate it back. A prime is gonna be at negative two comma one. Then I can do it for B. B is going to be at negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 5, comma, 0. I rotate it back. B prime is going to be at negative 5, 0. And I would do the same thing for C prime and D prime. For me, it's easier to rotate it, write down all of these coordinates, rotate it back, and then go ahead and plot those points. For 16b, we need to reflect triangle ABCD across the y-axis. So here's the y-axis. Here is quadrilateral ABCD. And to reflect it across the y-axis, each of these points are going to be equidistant from the y-axis. So A is one unit to the left. A prime will be... Um, one unit to the right. Well, this it's actually a double prime. I created a new um, coordinate plane to graph this. So this is actually a second transformation. So that's why it's um, double prime. Um, but I didn't want to, I thought it would be too busy if I kept this one here. So this was our first transformation. And here's our second transformation. That's why it's um, written as double prime. B is on the y-axis, so B and B prime, actually it'd be double prime. And then C is two units to the right. C double prime is going to be two units to the left. D is two, four, six units to the right. So D double prime is going to be six units to the left. So here is our image. Now, for part C, we need to calculate the area of quadrilateral ABCD. And it says, um, hint, divide figure into rectangles and triangles. And the reason why is because it's easy to find the area of a rectangle, and a triangle is just half of a rectangle. So for here, I have half of 3 multiplied by 4. And the reason why is because if we were to extend this to a rectangle, it would be a 3 by 4 rectangle. But it's half of that rectangle. So I have half of 4 multiplied by 3. Plus, we're going to add this rectangle, the green part, which is a 2 by 3. And then this third part is a triangle. So we only need half of that. If we here's the whole rectangle, the whole rectangle is a one by three, but we're only doing half of that, so we're going to take half of a one by three. Now I simplify four multiplied by three is 12, two multiplied by three is six, and one multiplied by three is three. Half of 12, or 12 divided by two, is six plus six, and then half of three, or three divided by two, is one and a half. Now I take the sum of this because it's the area, how many square units are in here. We add that all up. 6 plus 6 is 12, plus 1 and a half is 13 and a half. So the area of ABCD is 
13 and a half units squared.